I've created this whiteboard video to help you be able to compare an assignment that you have already completed with um, me walking through the process of that assignment. That way it can help you to see the process, um, find any errors that you might have made, and also give you helpful tips uh, for future assignments that are related to uh, one sample z-test uh, and hypothesis testing. So this um, example is from the hypothesis testing practice for active engagement points that was due on March 1st. So I would suggest that you open up that assignment and as um, I go through this video, you can walk through the assignment with me and compare and see if there are things that you could have improved, done better, uh, some tips that maybe um, will help you understand where you went wrong. Um, that's what I'm hoping that you'll use this for. So in this research scenario, you have everything you need to complete your hypothesis test. So um, when I am looking at this scenario, the first thing I want to do is walk through and see what is important information that I'm going to need to use for um, completing the hypothesis test. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to highlight the important components. So this is about uh, a local college and an English course for freshmen. They're comparing a new online version of the course compared to a population of um, traditional classes. And um, they have, as you can see, 16 uh, freshmen. That's the sample. N equals 16. And um, they're comparing their exam scores. So exam scores is the actual variable that is being measured. So that's an important thing to take note of. So um, I'm going to just um, look at here English composition exam because that's really the variable that's being measured. And then they say the average score for the sample is M equals 76. Well capital M tells us that that's a sample mean. And then the general population uh, with the traditional class had exam scores with a mean of 80, so mu of 80, and a standard deviation of 8. So we have all of the statistics and parameters that we need to complete this. Now here I provide you um, the um, alpha level. So you're going to test using 0.05. And because nowhere in this am I saying that we're expecting our sample scores to be higher or lower, and even here I say use 0.05 to test whether the new online course differs significantly from the traditional class. The word differs is suggesting that this is a two-telled test. So we know the alpha is going to be two-telled. So the first thing we want to do is look for, okay, what is our hypothesis going to be? So in question one on your active engagement, it asks you to state the alternative hypothesis. Now some of you provided me both the alternative and the null. That's fine, I'm not going to mark you off, but the fact is, is this assignment specifically wanted you to state the alternative hypothesis. So think about on the exam, if you're you know, wanting to make sure that you have plenty of time to do everything, don't do extra stuff that you don't need to do. So the alternative hypothesis, if you're only reporting that, that will save you time because it takes a lot of time to um, write both of those sentences. So really is what you should be reporting for number one is, ooh, excuse me, that's not what I needed. There we go. Now I've got it. So, the alternative hypothesis. So you want to make sure that you're stating it either with direction, if it if your hypothesis is that there will be direction, or without direction. So I'm going to say exam scores for an online English course
will be significantly, and I'm just going to put SIG, different than the traditional class. So this is very important because is what you're saying is, okay, exam scores is the variable that we're measuring. We have both of our groups, the online and the traditional. And then here by saying significantly different, we're basically stating this is a two-telled test. So then it, 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 it's all within that alternative hypothesis, everything we need to know to basically come up with our, our critical boundaries and then to write our results because our results are going to depend upon what we're originally looking for. So all of this is necessary. Now the wording might differ a little depending upon you, but ultimately this is what it should culminate is these components. So this would be for question one of your active engagement. So the next um, question, question two, is state the critical value for testing significance. So that's basically step two of hypothesis testing. Since we're using alpha 0.05 and it's to tell, we know that we can look in the back of our um, textbook in the unit normal table, find the um, alpha 0.05, but you won't look 0.05 because you need to split 0.05 into both tails. So is what you're looking for is in this distribution, you're going to put half of 0.05 here and half over here. So basically, you're going to put 0.025 here and 0.025 here. Sorry if I can get it to write. So you're going to look up 0.025 in the tails and you should be getting a critical value of positive and negative 1.96. So this is what you should be reporting for your critical value. So down here at the bottom is 1.96 negative, and at this boundary is 1.96 positive. So now you have step one and two of hypothesis testing, and this covers question one and question two. So the first part of your hypothesis test is done. Now, um, question three asks for you to report the test statistic calculated for the research scenario. So, is what, and we look, okay, well, here's negative 1.96 and positive 1.96, right? If we find, where would negative two be? Well, if you remember, right down the middle, a z-score of zero, right? Well, a negative 2 would fall beyond the one, negative 1 1.96. So negative, oops, negative 2 would be somewhere over here because 0 is here, and then it gets lower as we go to the left and higher as we go to the right. So that tells us because it fell in this critical region, in that beyond the boundary in the tells, it is significant. So for hypothesis correctly, you have, you have yourself set up for your results. Because basically, I'm just going to change a few things about this. I'm going to say exam scores for, an, for the online English course did significantly differ than the traditional class. And then I will report my statistics. So all you do is change it from... Um, present tense to past tense and state whether it was significant or wasn't significant. Two is, again, use that information that you had um, highlighted. So N equals 16, M equals 76, Mu equals 80, and standard deviation of 8. You're going to use all of that to calculate your Z-score. So to get that z-score, you're going to use z equals sample mean minus population mean divided by the standard error of the mean. So to get the standard error of the mean, 
you need your standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size. So all in all is, is what we're looking at is just kind of plugging in information. So for z equals m, m if we look back to our information is 76. So right here, oops, sorry, didn't mean to cover it. And then we're going to subtract that from 80 because right here is our population mean. And then our standard deviation is 8. And I'm going to put 8 divided by the square root of 16. Because remember, we have 16 here, we have 8 here. Sorry, it's getting messy. But we have all the information we need. So now is what I do is I kind of do the numerator and denominator separately just so that I can make sure that my order of operations in the calculator is appropriate. So I'm going to do 76 minus 80 and that gives us negative 4. Now I'm going to go ahead and calculate that denominator. So 8 divided by the square root of 16 is 2. So when we take negative 4 divided by 2, we get negative 2. So for question number 3, you should be reporting z equals negative 2.00 because it should be reported to the second decimal. So make sure that you're um, utilizing that, the, the two zeros after, uh, after that. So that's what you would put for question number three. Now question number four asks you about the p-value and it asks you to keep it at four decimals, which is standard. So now for a z of negative two, this corresponds to a p-value. So wherever negative two falls, which is on the far left side, there is a probability value. So in your unit normal table, you're gonna go to um, the z-score of 2, because remember, everything is a reflection of each other. What you'd find at negative 2, you would find the same at positive 2. And you should be finding that um, z-score on page 527 in the fourth column over. And if you look up a z-score of 2, you'll find that the probability value that corresponds to that is 0.0228. So that's in the tail. You're always going to look in the tail. So you're going to give me that p-value, p equals 0.0228. So that's your probability value. Um, so that's the, the probability at a z-score of negative 2 for rejecting the null when the null is true, so having like this error. So p should be less than 0.05. Now, um, your textbook talks about multiplying um, the 0.0228 by 2 so that you can get the actual amount. Don't worry about that because this is the only time you have to do that. Just give me your p-value because is what I want you to do is compare your z to z, your z obtained to your z critical value. Because in question number five on the active engagement, it asks you whether this um, was significant, whether your results were significant. Well, with a z of negative two, if we go back to number five, you would check off that it is significant. So it, the best thing to do for you at this point is to draw that distribution find your critical value boundaries and see if your obtained test st statistic, which is this, Z obtained, falls beyond those boundaries. And, and that will tell you whether it's significant or not. Anywhere beyond the boundaries is significant. Anywhere in the middle is, is highly probable and, and, and probably too close to being on average, and that would be not significant. So now we can move on, and if you'll um, look in your active engagement, um, it asks you to state your results in APA format. Well, to um, get 
before we get to the APA format, we kind of need to finish step three. We haven't finished. We have our obtained statistic, we have our p-value, but we're missing our effect size. So we do need to calculate an effect size so that we can include that in our APA results. So to get the effect size, we're going to use d equals, that uh, Cohen's d, m minus mu divided by the standard deviation of the population. So basically, we're going to use this negative 4 in our numerator and divide it by 8 because remember our standard deviation of the population was 8. And we could be and we'd be coming up with 0 0.50 or negative 0 0.50. If you drop the negative, that's fine. If you keep it, that's fine. Either way, it, it it's it, it's an effect size is what it is. So now we have all of the information we need to state our conclusion in APA format. So we need to go back, and this is where it's really important. Often is what I do is tell how it was significant. So I'm going to write my APA result. So here, APA result. Okay. So English exam scores for an online class were significantly lower than a traditional class as z equals negative 2.00 P equals 0 0.0228, and we did use a two-tail test, that's important, with D equals 0 0.50. Now, the reason I say what was significantly lower or were significantly lower is just it tells us what was going on. So the, the exam scores were lower because we have a negative 2, and if you look back at the information, um, this is a good thing to, to make sure you're checking on so that you're saying things in the correct um, order. The sample mean is less than the population mean. 76 is lower than 80. Okay, So the important things in this is that we have our variable that we measured, which is exam scores. We have our two groups, the online class versus the traditional class. Whether it was significant or not, it was significant. Then first thing we report is our obtained test statistic, our p-val after that our p-value, then whether the p-value was one tail or two tail, in this case it was two tail, and then we report our Cohen's D. This is all one sentence. There is no breaks in the sentence, it, it just it flows because this is actually a language and it's like reading a paragraph. There's a format. So it does need to be in this order. You do not ever report your critical value because this right here corresponds to what you would compare to your critical value, which was based off of your alpha. As long as this number is less than your alpha, it's significant. So that's really what people will look at. They don't ever look at critical values, so you don't report the critical value. So hopefully this helps you to compare and prepare for the exam um, for the rest of the semester. If you um, like this, where I'm um, going over one of the active engagements through a video, if you really like this, reach out to me um, because if I don't hear from you, I'm just assuming that um, you didn't look at the videos and, and could care less. So please, if this was helpful, please reach out to me and let me know. And I will continue um, creating these little videos sporadically for the active engagements for you to review after you've completed them and turned them in. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out and ask questions or come see me during office hours.